We had an ambition to win the league and we've got the reward tonight and hopefully we can do ourselves justice and that Galway will go on and win the All-Ireland. <laughs> and now you've been in Glasgow since Sunday night, what have the preparations been like for the club? Well, they've been very, very good, I mean, the commitment and the professionalism of our lads. And, you know, we make it quite clear that, you know, whatever the result tonight, it won't be because of lack of professionalism or fitness. You know, if, if, if we get beaten, we'll put our hands up and say it's down to lack of ability. But we've come here to do our very, very, very best and to represent the FBI National League to, the, to our best. And, you know, we're confident that we can put on a good performance. But these are why. Let, let's gain from the experience here. Let's look at the facilities and let's say, you know, Glasgow's a great city, but Dublin's a better city. And let's take back not just the experience, but the ambition and the vision to build facilities like this and to have professional players that can compete at the same level. Indeed, well said. Now, in terms of team selection, Patrick, you had a few injury worries uh, like Colin Hawkins, Trevor Wood and uh, Trevor Malloy. What's the situation now? Unfortunately, Willie Burke hasn't been able to make it, which means that we're without our two first-choice left-backs because Keith Doyle is over in, in Cyprus for the Irish Under-18 team. So a little bit short in that area, but we've been able to bring in a man of Paul Campbell's experience. Um, Colin Hawkins and Trevor Malloy are in the team and hopefully they'll be able to last the 90 minutes. But the commitment from my boys has been phenomenal. And, you know, I'm just so proud to see them here. And I've told them, enjoy the occasion, because you're a credit. You're a credit to football and your profession. And we're really going to enjoy tonight. Yes, Pat Dolan certainly is well keyed up for this one. Well, I'm sure there'll be some divided loyalties back in Ireland tonight. Some hoping for St. Patrick Athletic to do well here. And, of course, others looking for the hoops to uh, advance in the European Champions League. One way or another, we're looking forward to a good match. And it's time to join our commentary team for tonight. Owen Hand and first, George Hamilton. Thank you very much, Peter. There they are in strength, the fans of the champions of Ireland, St. Patrick's Athletic, who have certainly been enjoying themselves in this home from home for the Irish. Cheer goes up around this brand new Celtic Park, the Reebok Parkhead, as the Slovak officials lead out Glasgow Celtic and St. Patrick's Athletic. It really is a home from home. You've probably heard the fields of Athen Rye. That's not the only Irish flavour that's been around Glasgow today. From Boiso in the public address, pipe music in the shops, to Bewitched entertaining the fans in the stadium, to the traditional fields of Athen Rye. And of course, you'll know the history of Glasgow Celtic. It's as Irish as Irish can be in Scotland. And here they are entertaining the champions of Ireland. Third time they've had Irish opposition in Europe and on each occasion it's been in the European Cup in the second round in fact they played Waterford in 1970 and nine years later they played Dundalk who scored a memorable draw against them at Oriel Park the Celtic team well you know there's no more from Deep Holtz, the Danish international but it's studded with World Cup talent it's a team full of famous names and a team that'll line up like this Well, we see Celtic here, we're expecting them, as you say, to a, a 3-5-2 um, with the wing-backs of McNamara and Maher, they've been the, the swingers in it. Um, obviously, they're going to have a lot of possession and uh, we can talk about St. Patrick's tactics to counteract that. Because last time we've been the front man, brought back a drop a little bit deeper. And as for St. Patrick's Athletic, well, worries for them, they're without their two full-backs. Willie Burke and Keith Doyle are unfit. Jeff Clark, the Canadian international, is in on the right and Paul Campbell on the left. The good news is that Trevor Malloy is fit to play. And St. Patrick's Athletic will optimistically line up as a 4-3-3, though more realistically, it might be a 4-5-1. Well, we can expect uh, we can expect Trevor, Trevor Malloy and Liam Brayfield to be going out wide when Celtic have possession. And, uh, you know, every Pats player will be getting behind the ball quick just to frustrate uh, Celtic. Um, St. Pats have actually they've done an awful lot of work for this game. It's not just a big occasion for them. They are actually trying, they're out to make it a, the game alive, keep the game, the tie alive going back to Dublin. They've done, a, done an awful lot of preparation. Uh, six weeks pre-season, they've, um, they've played six matches. So they're out in the huddle there and we wish them all well. They're, I think they'll do well. Well, it's certainly a team that's together and they know they're on the big stage. And they know this is a great occasion for them. And they have huddled before Celtic got down into their typical pre-match routine. So the psychological round one has got to St. Patrick's Athletic, as planned by Pat Dolan, their most astute manager. And incidentally, rumours about his early departure are all exaggerated. He assured us this morning 
He's here in charge of Pats. His priority is St. Patrick's Athletic. And whatever happens, he sees his future at in Shakur. And he's certainly very much in charge tonight with Pete Mann, formerly of St. Francis, of course, who took them to the cup final in 1990 as his assistant. Bohan Benedik from Košice in Slovakia leads a Slovak team of officials. Interestingly, Dr. Joe Benglosh, Celtic's new manager, is Slovak as well, which is a, a strange confluence of influences on this night. And a great atmosphere in Celtic Park. It's the first competitive fixture in this stadium with its new capacity. And what a night it is for St. Patrick's Athletic. And the most important thing for them, of course, is that they don't concede an early goal, that they can grow into this occasion. Here's Malloy, chance to turn. Oh, it's saved by Jonathan Gould. And that will have done them a power of good. And Gould's clearance comes to McNamara. Ahead on Paul Campbell, a little out of position at left back, puts it out of play. Actually, that was a, it was a, not a bad chance, I thought, to turn Malloy so early. He didn't get hold of it with the left peg, but um, Liam Braver did well, he blocked it down, and uh, it was a good chance. Throw to come from Celtic, Larson, McNamara, Larson once more, and sweeping it wide for Mahe. Braithwaite faces him, Reggie Blinker, back inside for Paul Lambert, Craig Burley, who got that hairstyle during the World Cup, Reaper, Boyd, brought back on for McNamara, brought back once more. Hawkins has gone back to cover him and affect the clearance. And now Gilzeed. Osam, big stage for him and a plucky little ball played out there. Loose one from Malloy though, it's now with Jackie McNamara. Brought back, looking for McNamara again. Campbell got in the way. And it's Malloy holding off that back. Play on, says the Slovak referee. Malloy tucked inside for Gormley and back for Packy Lynch. And Jeff Clark, the right back. Gormley nicely played inside for Clark. Tracked back by Blinker. It's Clark, well tackled by Blinker. Got back well. Played forward over Hawkins' head almost by Lambert, but Hawkins read it superbly and directed it back to his keeper, Trevor Wood. Yeah, Colin Hawkins did read that well, but I mean, he, he will actually probably take heed of that. The long ball was switched. Strebber Wood into Gilzine. Stubbs came with him. And got their second time. Gormley in to win it. Come to Malloy, a little knockdown for Russell. Russell forward for Malloy once more. Reaper out of the middle. And Lambert. Burley and Blinker brought back off Gormley out for the throw to Celtic Blinker Stubbs and Reaper scorer of Denmark's first goal in France 98 McNamara and eventually put out a play by Hawkins it's Reaper for Lambert and off for Mahe right back Blinker well read by great way to get back to make the challenge at the expense of the throw to Celtic, it's Lambert with a miss Osam. And Osam got there. And it's Russell popping up on the right side, forced into the error. Throw in well, to Celtic. For Colin McPherson, if you could pick up your nephew David Buchanan, who is A State for the police control. Colin McPherson to pick up Donald Buchanan for police control. Reaper. This time it's Packy Lynch in the way. And Russell. And back for Clark. Clark seeking Braithwaite. Mahe holding him off. Braithwaite still battling on. Braithwaite goes down. Play on to the referee. Now it's Lambert. 
looking for and the glass through the channel and Lynch taking no chances putting it out well, that's important because I, uh, the game plan is fine so far just making sure they're getting behind the ball very quickly and concentration that is vital Lynch got in first now it stops stuck wide for McNamara back then for Tommy Boyd Reaper. Mahi. Interception by Clark. Now for Gormley. Little look, see what's on. Square to Martin Russell. Malloy out left. Russell inviting Malloy to run on. Boyd all the way back to Gould. And the clearance not terribly successful. Well, it found a Celtic man, but it didn't get the length he wanted. Maybe he'd claim it was a pass. Blinker. They're up for Brackback. Last touch to pass player, Celtic throw. Blinker. Arson. Oh, here comes Brackback. And saved by Wood. And the first real indication of the Celtic threat. But Trevor Wood had his near post well covered. Yes, the old 1 2 played here. And Packy Lynch was just, uh, he was caught again. Not a great attempt on goal. And Jackie McNamara will take the corner. Stubbs is on the near post. Reaper's in there too. And as Reaper tries to get there, but it's well defended by Colin Hawkins. It's McNamara once more. Craig Burley. Stubbs back in the danger zone. A push by Blinker on Clark. And the referee right there indicating the free kick to St. Patrick's Athletic. Yeah, there's another quick movement among the Celtic forward around there, and of course that's uh, and then really it's, it's the concentration is vital. There's no sense in sort of passing on players in, in tight areas like the penalty area. You've got to go with your owner all the time. Woods free kick. Elzine goes up. And it's Osa. Wide by Stubbs. Braithwaite making it difficult for Mahe, who's regained his feet. And his footing to be more accurate. And this is Mark Reaper. Elzine closing. Back inside for Stubbs. For Blinker. Facing in Clark. Blinker trying to find Larson. And no foul. The challenge was clean. The referee was right there. Been uh, impressive on the part of the referee. He's been right at the breakdown every time. It's a poor ball by Reaper, intercepted by Malloy, taking on Tommy Boyd, but the ball's gone out of play. Yes, these little short diagonal runs they've got to be very careful about. You see that guy Colin Hawkins there making a late challenge. It's Trevor Wood, Jersey born, Northern Ireland International. And now the fixture between the uprights at Richmond Park and indeed this evening at Celtic Park. Osam on towards Braithwaite. It's Blinker. Larson. It's for Burley, but Malloy almost got there. Now it's Boyd for McNamara. Paul Campbell committed himself there. Well challenged by Russell, but it's Boyd again. Stepping over a block by Osam at the point of breakdown. And it's Russell once more. Was meant for Campbell to run onto, but Burley got in the way. Now it's Mahe. It's Burley. Malloy came in. Burley was firm with its challenge. And it's now Boyd leaving it for McNamara. Boyd runs on. McNamara turning around Gilzine. It's Paul Lambert. Sam forcing him to play a wide. Mahe for Blinker. 
Vicker taking on Clark and getting the cross in. Hawkins goes up, well defended. Boyd coming in here. Lambert now. Back again for Blinker. Facing Jeff Clark. Again the cross, up goes Blackburn again. It's Hawkins with a header away. Lambert. Namahe. That's straight at Campbell. And his header straight to Boyd. McNamara's cross over Brathback's head, headed away by Clark. And now it's Lambert. Allen stops for Blinker, and it's out of play. Throw to Pat. Colin Hawkins has done very well there, like the two times there was at the end of those crosses. He's taking up positions early and concentrating, that is very good. Early ball played on by Gilzine, it's Braithwaite on the run. Chasing him is Reaper. Malloy's in the middle. Braithwaite trying to drill it in and winning the corner for Pats. And I think, in the circumstances, a fair return on the big breakout. That's good to see that. We want to see Leon Braithwaite using his pace there, and he got freed on the right-hand side, and that's what Pats will be doing, trying to do as much as possible in this game. And, of course, he's earned the corner kick. Gould does the organising. And the near post is Braithwaite, Paul Sam, tall man up there too, Paul Campbell goes to the goal line. And Gormley swings it in, Hawkins at the back, oh, and the header in fact at the end was Gilzines, and he knows he should have done better than he did. Arriving unannounced at the back post, went over Hawkins' head. Yeah, it's a good corner kick, this is a training routine corner kick, Eddie Gormley swings it deep, there was a bit of movement before it came in, and of course Gilzine comes in at the back, but he didn't get it on target. Hawkins got there first. Gilzine, well played to Gormley. And he goes for Braithwaite. Mahe goes in through him and he took the ball. The man fell over, no foul. Burley. Reaper. And Boyd. Larson. Burley. Mahe. Blinker. Lambert. Burley. And Boyd. Larson. Teasing Hawkins. Nice turn. Larson. Rolled into the path of Burley. Back for Boyd. All the men back for Pats. They've got to defend this well. McNamara. Burley. And Woods. Just deflected off on Sam and he had to put it over the top. This actually Stam, George Burley gets into forward position here, and you see it there, uh, Paul owes him a bit of let him free there just for a minute. That can't be allowed to happen, of course, then it's a goal scoring opportunity. And it's a Let's keep tracking the players, very important. It's a corner to Celtic, and Reggie Blinker will take it. Gilzine back. It's come out to Lambert. And this time it's Osama away, Burley once more. Now Lambert, Mahé, Blinker, Larson, Burley, right back, looking for Burley again, Gormley back defending, and now it's Lynch, and roll for Malloy, Blinker coming with him, Malloy past Blinker, and now facing Mahé, Braithwaite goes through the middle, Malloy has a little look, support from behind from Martin Russell, Seeking Gilzine, professional defending by Alan Stubbs, just uh, made his presence count. Lambert. McNamara. Paul Lambert once more. McNamara for Blinker. Lambert. Tommy Boyd and last Paul Campbell with him. It's Larson with Boyd outside him. Campbell sticking to his guns. Now it's Tommy Boyd. Past Malloy, but Russell in the way. And it's back again towards Malloy. And Boyd challenges him. And that's again not signaled as a free kick. 
a referee intent on keeping the game flowing, and there have been remarkably few stoppages in these opening 15 minutes or so. Reggie Blinker. Stefan Mahe, good tackle by Clark. Mahe goes once more, Clark has to challenge again, and does so. Well played. Corner to Celtic. That was a well-timed tackle by Jeff Clark. So Pats are doing it well. As I said, they're getting quickly behind the ball. They're making it very difficult for Saturday, but they've got to keep concentration. Uh, as ever, the corner comes from Jackie McNamara on that side. Curled in. Wood goes with the fists, and he got there. And decided to no man's land, but it's retrieved by Larson. McNamara facing him, Eddie Gormley. McNamara trying to get around Lynch with a shot in, but uh, it squirts right across the face of the goal and out for a throw in. With a situation there just a couple of minutes ago where St. Pat's were defending well and uh, Eddie Gormley just cut out something in the penalty area and played it out to St. Patrick's man. That's what they want to do. Don't give it away too easy. Uh, gave it away to Brat back there. Gilzino back to retrieve his error. Now it's Hawkins. And again. Well, that's the get-out ball, really. There was no one far enough forward. And they had to play something long to relieve the pressure, and they did. And now it's Lambert. Burley, and this time it's McNamara. Osam in the way. Campbell, Malloy. McNamara pulling him down. Free kick to St. Patrick's of them. Yeah, Trevor Malloy did well there. Have the confidence to hold it up. Have the belief in yourself. And he earned the free kick. Kick taken by Paul Campbell. Malloy with a flick on. Gilzine trying to turn Reaper. And the pristine Celtic Park sod has been disturbed to rather the nasty looking divots out of it. So that will be repaired in due course. Marvellous pitch, big pitch, 80 yards wide, 110 long. Big pitch for a National League team to perform on a big, big stadium for them to perform in. But Pats. One of the fittest, if not the fittest team in the National League, coached in that regard by Dave Mahidi from the University of Limerick. Seven of this squad, fitness terms, would count as elite athletes. That's how good they are. Malloy. And challenging Larson, the ball goes out of play. Actually, George is 17 of that squad would count as uh, they're testing or done on that. Proper scientific test, excellent fitness. Here's Larson. I, I have to hold up my hand and make my excuses. I meant to say 17, it came out as seven, but it's a remarkable testament to their to their potential. Well, I must admit, I mean Dave maybe I know from my time at Limerick, and Dave was top class when it comes to you know the, the physical side of getting the lads fit and uh, getting the mental side of that as well, right? Well they seem to have got themselves through the first 30 minutes or so with confidence. As it should be, and of course, a game like this for a team like Pats is about growing into it and beginning to believe that you deserve to be on the same pitch as these players. Gormley cut that out, Osam using his strength, Braithwaite and Gilzine. And winning the throw-in off Mark Reaper. Pat Dolan's attitude is, you may not be paid as full-time players, and that's only because... We don't have the money to pay you as full-time players. You may have another job, but you're a professional footballer nonetheless, and your attitude has to be professional. And that, I think, is what he's got from this squad. And he's had them here since Sunday believing that. They're certainly well prepared. And, and as I say, so far they're going about the job excellently. Brilliantly. Game plan so far, good. And now it's Blinker against Clark, which is one of the jewels developing the evening. The shot saved by Wood, and there's Clark to get it away. Uh, Alzan put in trouble, it's now Burnley, it's come back off Lynch. Gormley trying to be acrobatic, Burnley! Well, we know the kind of shooting power he has from the World Cup. And he attempted to bring it to bear there. Well, Trevor Wood had made an excellent block from an earlier shot, but uh, 
Craig Burley, he caught all of that maybe too well. It was rising all the time. Obviously the first shot. Yes, and Blinkers in the first line. A lot of pace and he can't hold, he does well, carries it away. He comes out here too. We come back here to Craig Burley and of course a snapshot. You say the pace, he just didn't get his knee over it enough. Norway that he scored that stunning goal against in the World Cup. And of course it's a kind of act that they've come to love in the East End of Glasgow and Clay Craig Burley. There's a, a superb atmosphere in here and it really is just about full. 60,294 I understand is the certified capacity of this stadium which makes it the biggest club ground in Britain. And it all belongs to Glasgow Celtic. This is Paul Lambert. Burley. Blinker pulled away from Clark. Blinker still. Lambert goes round the outside. Lambert with a cheeky cross. Rockback goes up. Oh, wonderful save by Wood from Larson. Blinker. Come to Burley. Push wide now for McNamara. And now Tommy Boyd. And the cross. And what's challenged by Larson and it's cleared away by Lynch and there was no free kick awarded there. Now, Mahe. And Paul Campbell puts it behind. Pats might well have a free kick there for the challenge of the goalkeeper. Now, it was a great overlap by Lambert, and he just cuts, dinks a little ball back in. And we see Larson getting up there. What a great save. This is a really good save. Trevor Wood at the top of his game. Here's the corner. McNamara short to Blinker. Back for McNamara once more. Blinker again. Outside flag goes up, and the pressure is lifted on Pats. But that sequence of events, Trevor Wood's save, Trevor Wood's bravery, when it seemed he'd been fouled, and Packy Lynch coolness under pressure to get it away. And Pat's weathered the storm, and they now have a free kick for offside. That's excellent. And you know, the nicest part of that was the finish there. The way they, after that period of pressure, the way they, they concentrate on just stepping out and leaving Celtic offside. That is good professional play. St. Patrick's Athletic have begun encouragingly here, but after only seven minutes at Brenton Park in Tranmere, you're not going to believe this. It's Shelva 1, Glasgow Rangers 0. An own goal. Shells lead Glasgow Rangers by a goal to nil. That's the UEFA Cup. This is the qualifying round, the first qualifying round of the Champions League. And midway through the first half, Celtic nil, St. Patrick's Athletic nil. Mahe. Reggie Blinker. Larson stepped over it. Now it's Campbell. Gilzine. Osam. And Clark. But, uh, Disappointment as the ball is given away. Lambert. Burley. Reaper. Hoisted towards Bratback. Hacky Lynch with the header. Eddie Gormley against Lambert. And Gormley losing a boot but getting the ball, but the possession has gone to Celtic. And Stefan Mahe has to retreat. Reggie Blinker. Burley. Now, the last one for McNamara. Cross over the head of Brad back, headed away by Clark. Onto it comes Paul Lambert. Lambert tried to open for a shot, then closed down by Russell. Back it goes to Burley, Osam faces him. Across the face of the Pats defence, Jackie McNamara, blocked by Paul Campbell. It's now Tommy Boyd for Celtic. Tucked inside for Burley. Burley on for Larson. Campbell challenges off Larson. It goes, goal kick to Pats. Yeah, Paul Campbell showing, showing his experience there. He knew he could make the challenge and, and just play it against uh, Larson. 
Just the thing about St. Patrick's there, it is important that, you know, when they are clearing the ball, if they can at all possible, they can't do it all the time, but try and find, try and find one of their own players. Jeff Clark there just gave it away unnecessarily. That can't, can't do that. Just to complete the story from uh, Tranmere, Prenton Park, Birkenhead, Sergio Perini with the own goal, an Italian own goal puts Shelburne in front against Glasgow Rangers. And here at Celtic Park, 25 minutes gone. First leg, first qualifying round of the Champions League. Celtic nil, St. Patrick's Athletic nil. Mahe goes off. Optimistic ball over the top, Hawkins sees it out. Goal kick to St. Patrick's Athletic. And there again, Leon Brayton let him go. Mahe made the run and Leon Brayton was just ball watching just for a fraction. Again, I can't stress, it's so important, you must just, it's one little movement like that can do him. Well, it's Glasgow, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but it's a bit uh, like the Manchester of Scotland, it tends to rain a lot here, and it's started again. Which might add to the excitement. Gazeen a little over-optimistic with that. Throw into Glasgow Celtic. Before you feel I've got it in for this fine city, let me tell you that my grandmother was born in these parks. So I have some affinity with the rain in Glasgow. This is Paul Lambert, and Wood has to save again, and that was a really good save by Trevor Wood, because given the changing conditions and given the arrival of Bradback, he had to hold it. I think there was a deflection as this as well, which would be credit. No, no. Good, good keeping. Save. Good save. Burley was pushed by Russell. Free kick to Celtic. Well cut out by Clark. Lynch for Braithwaite. Taking on Mahe. Turning Mahe and getting away from him. And ahead of him goes Malloy. That's for Trevor Malloy. Now Gilzine tracks through the middle. Braithwaite's in there too. Alan Stubbs out of the centre. Support from Eddie Gormley. Malloy tries to shape for the cross. And the jinky little run of his that he is so specialises in, and he's pushed. And the ball goes out for a goal kick. Well, that was a kind of industrial push that's allowed. He just couldn't get the space like, just to get in a decent cross. I mean, he was showing a bit of, uh, you know, maturity there because he didn't want to just put a nothing ball in. Well cut out by Eddie Gormley. Hawkins, well played. Jeff Cron. Happy Lynch. Z on towards Malloy. Mahe goes up. And then it stops to dig it out. Stops for Lambert. Now Mark Luper. Boyd. Straight at Osam. And left to go in and win it back for himself, and uh, the referee saw that as a handball. Mahe awaits as Burley prepares to take the free kick. And it's played for Mahe. Pass Braithwaite on to Blinker. Blinker taking on Clark once more, brought back at the near post. Darno Sam was back. He's having a towering performance, Paul Osan. Yeah, he got himself into a very good position there. Put out that cross near post. He's at Nicker as well, though. He's getting a few crosses. It's a good position to play. It's a corner to Celtic, which is their fifth of the first half. And McNamara as ever, with Reaper in the near post and brought back in among the defenders at the goal line. Reaper goes up. Challenged there by Hawkins. Then it's Lynch. It's come out to last. And Lambert, Patty Lynch, snaps at his heels, back it goes to Mahe, and then it's Tommy Boyd. Lambert. McNamara. Goes to George Reaper, Hawkins saves the day. Braithwaite. Russell, poked on there towards Trevor Malloy. 
Nicely played against Tommy Boyd. Back it goes to Campbell, who waits and then plays. A beautiful ball for Russell. Just a little too much pace on it. The idea was superb. Russell was on his way, but a little too much curl, and it took it out of play. That was good play. It was very unlucky. The ball overpaced a bit. Here's Blinker once more. Real thorn in the pat side on that left wing. Larson for Burley. McNamara. Then Boyd. That was Malloy. It's back with McNamara. Forward for Larson. Trying to find Burley. The attack broken down, and it's now Gormley. Blinker chasing after him. Gormley having to use Malloy, who was a little too optimistic, and acknowledges the fact. Now Craig Berlin, Celtic roll forward once more. McNamara. For Mahe. On for Blinker. Turn from him as Jeff Clark comes to mark. Back it goes. Alan Stubbs. McNamara. On to Boyd, but Malloy got in there. And now it's with Gilzine. Malloy makes ground up the left. Gilzine has a look. He's all on his own. Support from Eddie Gormley. Braithwaite's out right. So too is Clark, who pushes on. This Braithwaite. That's a uh, between two stools and Stubbs able to intercept. Uh, the break on here by Blackback. Stubbs past though too far. And a throw into Pats. Well, that's basically, I mean, what Pats don't want to do. I mean, they built up a lovely move there. They've got a few passes in and then they're uh, needlessly getting away by Liam Braithwaite. Eddie Gormley's the thing, I mean, captain's role there, but he's been very constructive, always trying, he's probing all the time, not giving the ball away. Alan Gazin has won the throw in. Ian Gazin. Alan, of course, this is father. Freudian slip. with an injured foot it should be pointed out but he showed none of that in that exchange with Bratback. His starting position was excellent. McNamara. Bratback. Back it goes to Reaper. Lambert. This is now Mahe. Winker at left. Teasing him again and turning him and trying to get the position for the cross. And it's all pretty pretty, but in the end, it's a ball back to Mahe. And that produced an opening. No, because Osan with a wonderful challenge and Lambert wins it back for Pats. Inside for Gormley, left there for Russell. Gormley goes on, Gormley brought down by Paul Lambert. European Cup winner. But two seasons ago with Borussia Dortmund, Paul Lambert. Here's Eddie Gormley, he's just played a little dummy there, let it go through to uh, Martin Russell who played him in there and he was taken down. Again, always available, Eddie. And it's so important, against us, it's so important that they, they keep possession when they have. Packy Lynch. A free kick towards Gilzean. On there by Stubbs, on by Burley, but Osam is there. And on by Osam to Russell. And played into space for Paul Campbell. Challenged by Burley. And it's out for the throw. Which Campbell will take. Quickly, looking for Malloy, but Boyd got in there. And now it's Burley. Blinker. Osam closes. It's on for Larson. Campbell, and he's grown into this role at left-back. 
Russell, and sensible ball into space with the Renault green and white shirts. And then it's Clark for Gormley. Gormley and Hawkins. And do I hear a cry when the Saints go march again? One well, of the 1,500 or 2,000 who've come to Glasgow have seen their team perform most creditably through these opening 35 minutes. I'm sure they're enjoying their evening here. Seeking to set Malloy away, but overcooked it somewhat. Throw in to Glasgow Celtic. A fairly steady drizzle now descending on Celtic Park as Mahe moves forward. Right back, Burley. Russell, the nearest player to him. He's looking for Brad back. It's Lynch in the way. Here's Russell now. Threaded through for Gilzine, back it goes for Gormley. And again the look to see who's on, and Osam is won. But he just failed to control it, it's come through to Tommy Boyd. Now Craig Burley. Little touch from Malloy, and then here's Campbell, skipping away from McNamara's challenge. But uh, going down with the second, and he's injured his knee in the process. And Russell is back to fill in at left back. And Russell has it, and Russell should put it out of play, and he does to allow the attention to come on to Campbell. This really would be tragic if Paul Campbell, because he has settled down, of course, and St. Pat's have all the full-back problems with the two lads who were out originally, and uh, Paul Campbell has been playing an excellent game, very experienced player. We see it's the way he falls, like, I mean, is it the uh, right knee, or... Let's hope it's not bad. Well, they lost uh, Willie Burke and... Keith Doyle and they were worried about Paul Campbell in the position which wouldn't be his regular position uh, a really tough competitor a, a man who was saying to us in the tunnel beforehand when you walk out there and you see the place you've got to go through the pain barrier to play here and he'll do that a man known to his colleagues as Soupy and the reason for that will be obvious to anybody who's ever done the grocery shopping singing the fields of Athen Ryan. Well, oh, that's, that's, that's the inch of call, lads. Hawkins. Campbell appears to be none the worse for that. Hawkins in first, then it's McNamara. And now last facing Campbell. Trying to thread one inside, and McNamara going down the outside, and did have it for face. St. Pat's athletic penalty area, but they got away with it. Malloy, bundled out of it, ball goes out of play, throw to Celtic. That was a very dangerous moment, and you do wonder about Paul Campbell, was he just, you know, he wasn't fully recovered from that knock. McNamara cer certainly had him for pace there. Mahe. Hawkins couldn't quite get up, Campbell did though, and Russell gets it away. Well, it's a, a ropey little spell that Pats are going through now, but then you've got to do that, you've got to get through these moments. Celtic with the initiative, it's true, and the traffic has been mostly towards the Pats' goal. And here's Blinker, taking on breakaway. Blinker's cross, and they all stepped over, and it's come through to McNamara. McNamara looking for the penalty there, and then it's Larson, played wide for Tommy Boyd. And Boyd hoisting one who's get that penalty, he's saved again! That was a brilliant save. It's right down the goalkeeper's nightmare, right down on the deck, and he gets down there. It's brilliant. Here we see it. It's a great ball to put across here. 
It's a good strong head from Burley. And that's an excellent goalkeeper said. And of course then the second block as well. And here's the corner from Blinker. And Wood is there, full of confidence, clutching it safely. He certainly is in form tonight. Here's Burley. Two chances he's had. This is played for Blinker. Malloy goes back, Campbell stands off, Malloy tries to get at him, Blinker with the cross, Burley the knockdown, Lambert, and now Boyd for Blinker, maybe they've detected a chink there in the Pats' armour on this side, floated in by Blinker, firmly headed away by Hawkins, but Blinker, who'd been playing on Clark through most of the first half, significantly since Campbell got hurt, is now operating on this near side, which is Paul Campbell's flank. Mahé. Gormley ahead of him. Cut out by Clark. And this is now Lambert. Burley. Ooh. And Wood, I think, was beaten by that one. The dive was despairing. Yeah, he's using it. I mean, the, the turf is damp, so it's well worth the crack from there. But it's deflected there. It's deflected off the... Celtic player, so it's um, didn't trouble trouble Wood. Free kick to pass. with a free kick. Reaper winning in the air. It's Burley. McNamara. Russell chasing back. Campbell slides in. And so taken by McNamara. Lambert. Blinker. And straight out of play. That's good, they're Harris and Larson which are just playing a bad ball. Right? The defensive side of their game has been excellent, Pat. Every man is just, you know, they're getting the next, they're making it difficult, Celtic. Celtic are trying to play little one-twos, uh, and of course, great goalkeeping has kept them in it. But credit to every tip of his player out there. Malloy got a little flick, but uh, the three-man defence, Reaper beaten, but Stubbs was there. Now it's Mahe. Stubbs, Celtic press on, stopped by Clark, Lynch slides in, but now it's Burley again, Stubbs, or Sam, Braithwaite, Gilzeen, back again for Braithwaite, the angle of the pass just not quite correct, Stubbs cutting out, and then it's Mahe. Damara, past Malloy's challenge, not past Russell, and Malloy scampers forward as Russell holds it, Tommy Boyd looks on, still Martin Russell left there for Trevor Malloy, Malloy with a look inside, and forced to go back to Campbell, Campbell under pressure from Bratback, and going for Trevor Wood. Gilzee, Osam, making room, then it's Russell running into trouble, and it's come through to Lynch, no foul, and Lynch strikes forward and Braithwaite had stayed on side, but can he keep it in play, and the answer is no, the rain still pouring down on Celtic Park as we move into the final minute of the first half, it's been a highly creditable first half from St. Patrick's Athletic, who as you'd expect have been put under immense pressure, but they haven't panicked, they've kept their concentration, and that has to be the key through this game for them to maintain the concentration against the Scottish champions. It's Craig Burley. Mahe. And then Tommy Boyd. 
Kamara. Swept in by him and headed away by Osam, who's such an important figure in front of the St. Patrick's Athletic back four. It's Paul Lambert, Reggie Blinker. This time it's Braithwaite against him. Back on that left wing for Celtic. Forced to go back to Mahe, to Stubbs. Stubbs going to try one. Never likely from that kind of range to the big defender. And I'll tell you, St. Patrick's, they'll be delighted when they see that happening. You see Alan Stubbs hitting from, what, 40 yards? I mean, that's it. that shows that they're doing their job very well. Then for Mahe, going to stop its time at the end of the first half. Forward from Lambert, and the whistle goes for an offside against Celtic. Free kick against Bradback. Wow, how Pat Dolan must be wanting to get his players into the dressing room for half time with the scoreline looking like that, so that he can commend them on what's been a doughty performance through this first half and give them the words of encouragement that will help them through the second. Flick on by Gilzine. On by Stubbs. And Lynch will let it sail through to Wood. They'll also have the belief, of course, that they, they know they've, they've catered for everything that uh, Celtic have thrown at them. And that will help them, it should help them. Here's Malloy. Taking on Burley. And he wins the free kick. There we are, there's that belief we were just mentioning there. Trevor Malloy just taking on George Burley. And beating him. Or Craig Burley. Another one of your slips towards the Gilzean <laughs> one. Back in we're a different going, era. We're showing our age, Owen. <laughs> but it's a free kick to St. Patrick's Athletic. Well into stoppage time at the end of this first half. Now we know Eddie, Mal Eddie Gormley can can crack them from this kind of range. But Martin Russell facing us, Trevor Malloy with his back to us, and Gormley with the captain's armband, ready to strike it left-footed, and a five-man wall faces him. It's set up for Gormley to thump it, but he got right underneath it, and he'll be furious with himself that he did that. And that is the last action of the first half, and it's the boos that ring around the new Celtic Park. And Celtic make their debut in this reinvigorated and reinaugurated stadium. Their fans boo them off the pitch, having failed to break down St. Patrick's Athletic's resistance at halftime. A commendable first half from St. Patrick's Athletic. And lest you need reminding, at Prenton Park in Tranmere with half an hour gone, Shelburne in the UEFA Cup lead Glasgow Rangers by a goal to nil. Sergio Perini's own goal, the difference between the teams there. 1 0 to Shelburne, scoreless, and the away leg for St. Patrick's Athletic. The National League champions holding the champions of Scotland. And of course, this is the start of a long, long road to the Champions League final next May. And after this break, we relive what was a wonderful Champions League final in Amsterdam just a couple of months ago. Stay right with us. Celtic Park for the uh, traditional rendition of You'll Never Walk Alone. Boran Benedict, the Slovak referee, blows his whistle and the second half is on with Celtic attacking the goal to the left, the city end of the Celtic Park Stadium. The rain still teeming down on the east end of Glasgow. Great noise all around this wonderful stadium. Celtic who dominated the first half, seeking the breakthrough that would give them a position that would match their setting. Wood goes, makes another fine save as Larson came in. Again, excellent goalkeeping there because Larson was on the end of that. It was, it was searching him out the far post. Trevor Wood anticipated very well. 
Well, nil nil here, and we've started our second half. And uh, the first half at Prenton Park, Tranmere has gone Shelburne's way. An incredible scoreline in the UEFA Cup. Shelburne 2, Glasgow Rangers 0. Perini's own goal followed by a goal from Mark Rutherford in the 42nd minute. So Shelburne, although playing away from home, their home leg are 2 0 up. And Pats here in their away leg are putting themselves highly commendably indeed. This is Mahe against Braithwaite, who's made the corner for Celtic, but has made the tackle count. McNamara to take. Stubbs at the near post. Oh, the front header went in there from Reaper. the goal of well, the position from which he scored is the opening goal for Denmark in the World Cup yes yeah, just too much of the near post he would have been better advised just to help it uh, further across the goal it was very hard to get an angle on it to get it to uh, direct it person up there Woods goal kick or Sam goes up and then Burley Larson and Burley again and Braithwaite got his head in the way and here's Packy Lynch and Lynch delivering one long Gilzine chasing after it Stubbs is there for Celtic and Reaper and on to Tommy Boyd Mahe Clark made the tackle and Mahe couldn't keep it in play Throw in is to St. Patrick's Athletic. <laughs> Pushing on Gilzine by Stubbs, free kick to St. Pat's. Leon Bright with us has done very well so far in this half. Uh, he's cut out a few dangerous uh, situations down that left-hand side of Celtic's attack. And Packy Lynch will take the free kick. Delivered long towards Braithwaite. Stubbs going up. Braithwaite got the touch on it. Uh, Kilzine rather got the touch on it. Braithwaite chases into the corner. Back then for Malloy. Too many green and white shirts around. And then Lynch. Brings down Larson and the yellow card comes out for Packy Lynch. The tackle on Henrik Larson. That is a good example, of, uh, you know, of getting the position wrong to start with. Packy was just caught. Uh, Packy Lynch was just caught in the wrong position. He's forcing. He brought him down. Of course, the yellow yellow card was merited. Larson on the worse. Reaper. Lambert. And there's Larson. Nice turn. Lynch got there. Back pass. No. Well, that's a very charitable ref uh, refereeing decision by Mr. Benedict. And meanwhile, the free kick's been given away by Malloy, and the card's coming out for him for the deliberate handball. Well, the Lynch put out his leg here as Larson pulled away. And well, You've got to say that Packy Lynch did excellent. It was brilliant sort of touch that he got there. You know, I would think that the referee is probably right because he, there was nothing else he could do. He'd just get the touch. It wasn't a deliberate back pass. Well, that was the referee's interpretation, and St. Patrick's Athletic had no free kick awarded against them. But a second name has gone in the book that of Trevor Malloy for the deliberate handball. But the second half continuing where the first one left off with Celtic. Pressurising St. Patrick's of Bay. As they have to do as the home team, and indeed the highly favoured home team. Lambert. Blinker. Blinker's cross. Oh, Sam's headed away. Gilzine. Back for Gormley. Played wide for Braithwaite. Blinker chasing him. Braithwaite. Back for Clark, then Lynch. And 
Gould, who's had a relatively untroubled night. He hasn't really had a save to make. It's important to get the shape again, so Pass just went a bit, a bit ragged there. Stubbs on for Mahe. Mahe seeking Larson. Hawkins heads away, and Clark can't come at the corner. It would seem Celtic might have been advised at half time to, to get the crosses in a bit earlier because if Blinkers has hit a, a few kind of angled crosses in, looking for Larson. Here's Blinker. Back again for McNamara, near post, ball is out, goal kick. It wasn't actually a save by Wood, he went down to cover the post, the ball was out. But again, you see, this is a corner kick, so Pats again, they must be alert to this, it's a short corner kick, it finds Larson on the edge of the box there, and it creates a goal scoring situation. They must stay alive in these situations. Osama. And it stops Amai. Blinker. Last. Blinker. Hawkins there ahead of Jackson. Malloy intercepting Stubbs pass. And winning the throw. Clever play by Trevor Malloy. Yeah, it was well done. I mean, he, he just earned himself a throw, and it just gives the whole side a breather. Instead of just playing it forward and giving possession back, and then the back, the back four are under pressure immediately. Reaper throws to Celtic. But again, indications that the composure is coming back to St. Patrick's Athletic, that they're prepared to settle in situations like that and take what is best for them out of them. That is right, George. I mean, it mightn't seem such an important thing, but the two lads there, Clark and Brightway, just uh, worked between them just to get a goal kick. Brazil on from Malloy. It was read by Stubbs. Struck long by Stubbs, looking for Jackson. Jackson up ahead of Hawkins, but found him in the process, and it's a free kick to Pats. Frustrating beginning of the second half for the half-time substitute, Darren Jackson. A free kick to St. Patrick's Athletic. Stefan Mahe, Larson, Osam got up ahead of him, Larson again, and Osam and Braithwaite getting there, and uh, Osam goes down, but it wasn't a foul. It was meant for Jackson, cleared by Hawkins, Burley up, now it's Gormley, taking on Lambert, taking him on very, very well indeed, and picking up Braithwaite, and back he goes for Clark. And Clark showing confidence too for Gormley, but long leg of Lambert got there. Then Gormley finds Osam, and he helps it on towards Paul Campbell, but just put a little bit too much pace on it. And it's out of play for a throw to Celtic, but that was a neat little passage by Pats. It was lovely play, particularly by Eddie Gormley. He's having a great game for St. Pats. Here's Mahe. Black boots for the second half. Reggie Blinker. Clark, who's certainly grown into this game, 
But then it's Burley looking for Jackson. Hawkins masterful in the air. Oh, a shot here. Flashed across the face of the goal and the goal kick. McNamara. That's OK there. I mean, look, it's a snapshot. I mean, there's not much you can do about that. They score like that one, and you say, well done to the score score. Tackle of McNamara, ball put out by Campbell, throw into Glasgow Celtic. Stubbs. Mahe, and that change of footwear obviously indicating the treachery of the top surface and the incessant drizzle that's falling. Blinker, Larson, that's Lynch, Gormley, Clark, Gormley again. Sort goes in up the line, Stubbs who has it and it's Stubbs for Reaper. And it's how it played for the third of Celtic. Craig Burley. Assisted by Mahe. Straight out Osan. Osan shot to the back by Blinker. But he's a big, strong lad, Paul Osan. Take more than that to shrug him off. Then he has a look, then he invites Breakway to run on. But Burley had seen it coming, and the back pass goes to Gould. And Gould's clearance comes straight to Malloy. Forward for Gilzine, optimistic ball back to Malloy. Ian Gilzine, he's got, he's got to know that uh, he's got to hold that. You know, just, just hold it, bring his team into the play. Blinker. That was Jackson. Here's Larson back for Jackson. And Jackson with a cross. But it's gone out. It's a goal kick. There's one thing only that strikes me about the Pat's performance, and I know we're only approaching an hour of the match gone, but uh, Pat Dolan was making the point to us this morning about the difficulty of making a selection for a team like this and what he went for in the midfield, which cost Tommy Morgan his place, was physical presence, and that has been important. Yeah, it is. I mean, the experience of the three lads there, like, I mean, it's really showing. Martin Russell's an awful, but none of the experience he's had. And, of course, Eddie Gong, we all know about him. And Paul, Paul Ozan's doing some great work. He's been the one who's been tracking George... Uh, Craig Burry, I said George again. Burry's been making those forward runs, and he's been doing some off, tremendous off-the-ball work. This is Burley on the ball now. Mahe. Jackson, back for Burley. Then for Lambert. And on for Boyd. McNamara facing Campbell. McNamara runs, got the cross in, Woods there. His position was excellent. Uh, Boyd got there, Campbell didn't want to commit himself, so now it's McNamara again to sweep one forward, deflected off Campbell, and again, safe hands from Trevor Wood. And safe hands is the appropriate there because uh, Larson was just waiting. Allah Dennis Law to top it in. 
Gilzine went up with Stubbs. Stubbs' head was last to touch it. And it's a throw to St. Patrick's Athletic. We're talking about that midfield of St. Pat's. It must have been a bit uh, very disappointing for Tommy Morgan because he's an excellent young player. And he has such a fit lad, he gets around, but uh, he might get his chance later in this game. Go to, go to. Throw to come from Soupy Campbell. Gilzine on for Malloy. And the decision is offside against Trevor Malloy. Stubbs for Mahe. Burley. This is McNamara. Boyd goes round the outside. And Campbell makes a challenge. And then Malloy makes a second B challenge and the ball goes out of play. And it's a throw-in to Glasgow Celtic. Offside. Well, you know, that is, that's fabulous to see that because it's sort of showing up uh, Celtic. You know, as a, who's the professionals out there? The pack step up, he stays in. Offside. And uh, just that little gesture from Jackie McNamara, he's wasting time. It's only just over an hour gone. There's plenty of time for Celtic in this match. But if they're gesticulating like that, it's indicative of a kind of frustration that's creeping into their team. And here's Gormley. Braithwaite. Showed a lot of that to Mahe, but did well. Still, it's Braithwaite. And Darren Braithwaite. Oh, it was blocked by Stubbs. It's a throw in. Throw in to Pat. Taken by Clark down the line for Braithwaite. Oh, too far down the line for Braithwaite. And a goal kick to Celtic. He did very well there. He held it up, held it up, and um, the goal scoring. Well, he had, he had the strike. Campbell did the hard bit. Malloy profited. And now it's Gozi. Campbell, nicely played. But barged out of it, passed out of it. And it's Lambert. And now Craig Burley. Stefan Mahe. Blinker. Jackson, little touch on towards Larson, and he's got the free kick, and Osan can't believe it. Little nudge on him, which seemed uh, nothing out of the ordinary. And that's it, Paul Ozan, get back in, forget about it, it's gone. Get back in in your position. You can see Paul Ozan just, he just pulls him there. Yeah, I think it's fair enough, he got a little tap on his ankle. Now, this is Paul Lambert, a three-man wall facing. Trevor Wood crouches three yards from his goal. Russell at the right end of the wall there. As Lambert comes up. Oh, wasted. Clark, Gormley. Back for Clark. Clark pulled back by Blinker. And a free kick to St. Patrick's Athletic. You would think that if he, you know, if he, the referee concedes that it is a free kick, you might have thought it was a merit in a yellow card. Well, there's a hero for Inchicore and beyond tonight, Trevor Wood. What a marvellous setting in which to perform your heroics, this brand new Celtic Park. 61,000 in to see it. That's a free kick awarded against Colin Hawkins. Oh, no. No, that's a bad decision. You're right, Colin, that was the other way. The referee bought the dummy, and it's a free kick to Celtic. To be taken by Paul Lambert. And Wood has to punch. And he didn't get the touch on it. Well, it was hung up there invitingly by Lambert. Stubbs just gets a touch here. Yeah, just a little misjudgment there. That was just, it could be so important. Just one slight error after things like he is having a great game.
Gilzine, a little header on. Braithwaite chases it again. Almost got there ahead of Mai. Well, the brother of Darren Braithwaite is always going to be a quick man. 11 second 100 meter man, but it wasn't quite enough for him there. Now it's Alan Stubbs, Tommy Boyd. Burley. Sam, but in effect it set up Craig Burley and his shot was just too high. Yeah, that's what I was saying about Paul Ozam and just, just get that foot in there, just the touch there, he stretches out the leg there and Burley is a snapshot, similar to the one he had in the first half. Again, just doesn't get his knee over it. But again, good, good play by Paul Ozam. And uh, Celtic going to make a second substitution, they're taking off Jackie McNamara. Sending on Simon Donnelly, who might well have considered himself unfortunate not to be in this team. From the uh, Morton Vicos position, was up for grabs. And now he goes on in place of Jackie McNamara. And that tells you the weight of expectation, that welcome he gets, tells you the weight of expectation that will rest upon his shoulders. Osa. Osa. This is Larson. It might yet come for Burley, but no, it's Donnelly. And this was Mahe, and it's behind for a goal kick to Pat. Well, there's a cheer around Celtic Park, and I don't know if they're listening to radios or not, but if they were, they would know something that would give them great heart indeed, because their great rivals from across Glasgow have gone further behind at Prenton Park. Listen to this, and believe it if you can, it's Shelburne 3, Glasgow Rangers 0. Pat Morley, that great goal poacher, formerly of Cork, now very definitely a Shells man, who missed so much of last season with ligament damage, has scored in the UEFA Cup, and Shelburne lead Rangers by three goals to nil in what is ostensibly their home game. Here's another booking for Pats. But this is developing into an unbelievable night for Irish football. The free kick will have to be taken again. Eddie Gormley dived in there, and that was the reason he got booked. A free kick, which uh, Craig Burley is coming up to take. And Burley floats, and Larson's run was uh, professionally impeded, and it's a goal kick for St. Patrick's Athletic. A little bit of desperation about that free kick. No real purpose to it. And here's another card coming. St. Patrick's Athletic goalkeeper Trevor Wood. Trevor Wood has been booked for time wasting after that free kick. That's uh, four Pats players with their names in the book. And he's taken the goal kick. Oh, Sam trying to get Malloy away. Just too physical there. Well, they were matching each other pace there. Indication of good fitness levels. And this is now Mahe. Blinker. Off for Larson. Packy Lynch putting it out of play. Throw into Celtic. 20 minutes to go. Celtic nil, St. Patrick's Athletic nil. It certainly is a great night for League of Ireland football. When we think back to last season, the pleasure that St. Pat's and Charles gave us, and isn't, it, isn't it marvellous that the two of them are doing so well right now? Reggie Blinker. Lambert, set back for Stubbs to play it. And again, Wood makes the save. It was straight at him, but it's a greasy ball, it's still raining, 
and he gathered it in superbly. Reaper. Donnelly. Free kick again against Malloy. With good discipline there too. He didn't protest. He got back into his position to defend the free kick. Donnelly. Boyd. Donnelly. Jackson. And Donnelly. Donnelly shot and again Wood died to save. Showing remarkably safe hands to Wood. A wonderful display of goalkeeping. And, and again, like uh, the shooting has been restricted to, you know, all of them outside the box. Good indication that everybody's doing their job. You, know, you say about uh, St. Patrick's said that, that, you know, the discipline is so important to be kept, but there's a few little silly free kicks being given away and unnecessarily yellow cards too. We keep doing the right things, because we don't want a silly red card and then that would make the, the, the task so hard. Well, Martin Riley is coming on for Trevor Malloy. That's uh, Pat's first change. And that, dare I suggest it, is uh, another piece of gamesmanship by uh, Pat Dolan in that he chose the moment where Trevor Malloy was as far away as possible to, to effect a substitution. And he thinks things through so completely. And that would be another little thing that he's just worked out. And Martin Riley comes on to replace Trevor Malloy. Yeah, Trevor Malloy, as we know, he, you know, he's a bit of a hamstring problem. Though. He came off last Saturday night, I was watching him against Norwich City, and uh, yeah, he did well to last day so far. He, he, he did very well during his stay in the park. And up with 19 minutes to go, Martin Riley makes his entrance at Celtic Park. Packy Lynch, but uh, that's gone away. It's Lambert now. Mahe pushes on. Back for Lambert, but Osan got there first. And so Mahe has to track back. Come on, come on. Lambert looking for Larson. Hawkins makes the header. Onto it comes Blinker, but Clark is there first and seems to be impeded by Blinker, but the referee overrules it and says it's a throw in to Celtic. Mahe. Osam again in there to break up the attack. Stubbs, shoulder charging him out of the way. Those, those long legs have worked wonders from Paul Ozan tonight. Blinker. Braithwaite makes the tackle. Throw in is to Celtic. Ah, this is Alan Stubbs, it just wouldn't come out from underneath his foot. Donnelly. Boyd, Donnelly, and this is Burley, the dangerous ball here, and well defended by Jeff Clark at the expense of a corner kick. And Reggie Blinker, the man will take this. McNamara, who usually took him, is off, Wood has to punch it. Job completed by Riley. Oh, and this is Tommy Boyd who got his feet all over the table. Lambert, Donnelly, Lambert once more. Facing Paul Campbell and his heel did the business there. Then it's Riley. And Russell and Gilzine and back to Campbell. Are doing when, when South Carolina are getting down the flanks and they're having to get hurried crosses and not good quality crosses, 
which was not the reason for the goalkeeper. Uh, Donnelly gave it away to Riley, but uh, Riley has given it away, and Donnelly has it back once more. Now Burley, Colombi closes. Darren Jackson facing Paul Campbell. Jackson over the head of Wood. And Clark defends again at the expense of the corner, which will be Celtic's 11th in this match. To one in the first half for St. Patrick's Athletic. They've taken it quickly. Larson. In goes Lambert, stopped by Osama. Then it's Patty Lynch. Gilzine, Riley, and on it goes. There was that quick corner kick again that Celtic took, so you know, St. Pat's again, be alive. <laughs> Gilzine. Trying a very optimistic ball past Tommy Boyd. It ends in a throw to Celtic. Paul Lambert. Now this is Larson, and in the way was Lynch. Eddie Gormley has it. And a beautiful ball over the top to take the pressure off his defence. Braithwaite. Couldn't quite get there. It looks as though uh, Darren Braithwood may have a problem. Leon Braithwood, I should say. Darren being his Olympic sprinter brother. It's Gilzine. And now Campbell. Hawkins. Looking for Riley. Gould will leave his goal. Forward. Campbell did well there, but it's Larson. And now Donnelly clearing up for him in the middle. Donnelly's cross. Well, Clark and Lynch did what they had to do. And Braithwaite and Gormley complete the job. Gormley cracked by Blinker. And the free kick's been awarded against Reggie Blinker. A free kick to St. Patrick's Athletic. Again, we see the crosses coming in, and you know, at that time there was Packy Lynch and Jeff, Jeff Clark. Both of them coping with it. In fact, it's nearly it's kind of too many crosses going about there. And of course, Eddie Gomley bringing it out of defence and they're earning the free kick. Getting very tired out there. I see Eddie Gomley there. He's, he's, he's bending down, but he's put in some work. Let's just keep at it. Uh, Darren, uh, Leon Braithwaite may be suffering most of all. Hughes from Prenton Park. Rangers have got one back. A penalty from Jörg Alberts. A precious away goal for them. What a tackle by Paul Campbell. Martin Riley, I do beg his pardon, in the Paul Campbell position. Well, that's probably a sign of it when you say that, George, because they're working so hard for each other. With Martin Riley filling in for Paul Campbell in that instance. Here's Donnelly. Mahe. Hawkins got there ahead of Larson. Then it's Gilzine, he held that up well. Now Riley. Uh, and on it goes to Gormley. That's a ball just to give some breathing space. An encouragement from Jeff Clark to Eddie Gormley, who is clearly feeling the pace. Hawkins got in. There's Reaper, and now it's Donnelly, who has looked a live wire, but uh, Riley again. He finds a way through to Jackson. And Wood leaves his goal, and Donnelly came through, and Wood makes the save. I think it's significant, too, that uh, since half time went. Celtic sent on Simon Donnelly early in the second half after the arrival of Jackson at half time that Pats immediately countered with Martin Riley. And he has had some defending to do against Simon Donnelly. And I hear his last looking for Blinker, but Clark coming out. And what a great second half he's had. Really grown into this game. Now it's Braithwaite taking on Mahe. Showed a lot of that to him. Mahe making the challenge. And the ball is now with Alan Stubbs. Stubbs then. Henry Glasson. Craig Burley. And on to Tommy Boyd. 
Jackson. And Burley tries the shot. Russell to bring it away. Gilsey. Worked it through to Russell somehow or other. And he picks out Osan. And Gormley pulls away to the right. Burley tracks back. This is no for Riley. Riley with a chance. Oh, Martin Riley has put it just wide. Santa turn apart. And that could so easily have been a shot lead goal for St. Patrick's Athletic. What brilliant play here by Paul Ozum. He's having a marvellous game, but he feeds Martin Riley. He cuts him. And this is just outside that post. That deserved a goal. And what a sensation that would have been. And meanwhile, a change for St. Patrick's Athletic. Trevor Crowley has come on in place of Leon Braithwaite, who was obviously tiring. But uh, what about that for a breakout? And that's not to say that Pats have been backs to the wall all the time. A Trevor Malloy chance in the very first minute, and then Martin Riley with something that very nearly produced a goal for St. Pats after what could hardly be described as the move of the match. And I'd have to endorse 100% what you said about Paul Sam and Eddie Gormley forcing those tired legs to push forward as well. And there they go again. Hawkins, Kilzee, and this is Jackson. Seven and a half minutes plus stoppage time to go. And St. Patrick's Athletic have held the mighty Celtic. So far, so good. Mahe over the top. Well, that is certainly frustration. The Pats are doing this job magnificently. And a, a real credit to the League of Ireland, that's for sure. As our Shelbourne. Well, we hear from Prenton Park that Rangers have got another back. And bear in mind, as Shelbourne's home game is being played in Birkenhead, Tranmere's ground. That's a second away goal for Rangers. Shelbourne three, Rangers two. No doubt for team so the part there too. And another change on the Celtic team. It's their final substitute. Enrico Anoni goes on. And Mark Reaper goes off. And that coming with seven minutes to go. Goal kick to pass. kick to Shelburne. His first contribution after he's come on is not a very positive one. And only I'm talking about. And uh, there's the uh, Celtic fans voting with their feet. It's quite remarkable to see. And the you'll never walk alone is coming from the St. Patrick's end. The 1,500 to 2,000 who've made it from Dublin 8 are the ones who are chanting. They'd scarcely believe they could silence the Celtic fans in here. Riley trying to get in but uh, offside's been awarded against him. But what a performance it's been, these 84 minutes, and they have given them every encouragement, and it's been so disciplined, such a credit, not only to those who've performed on the pitch, but to Pat Dolan and Dave Mahidi, who've masterminded it all. It's been absolutely brilliant. And the tactical side of the approach, the professionalism, top, top class. This is only the first leg, of course, and it isn't over yet. Here's Eddie Gormley. Clark. Side of play, it's a throw to Celtic. Eddie would be trying to find the corner flag with that one, just miscued. Anoni. Donnelly. him down, Lambert still, and this is Blinker, Blinker, and Clark gets it away, and out it goes, corner to Celtic. Two footballs on the pitch, it'll be Reggie Blinker to take the corner. Hawkins up and away, back in again by Lambert, Jackson trying to rise. And eventually, it's cleared away by Coley. 
just towards one of those corner kicks. I mean, with the ball boy supplying the spare ball so quick, uh, you know, when you're tired, like you've been defending a nil nil there, it's, it can be seem to be a bit unfair on set pads. So they've got to be aware of that if it happens again. It's Burley. That's looking for Donnelly. Campbell is with him. Well, he may be carrying a knock. He's gone through the pain barrier. He's had a great game. This is Jackson. They still got some defending to do. Burley. Tommy Boyd. Oh, and right across the face of that goal. And a goal kick is the award. Well, you know, we talk about teams keeping their shape and whatever discipline, but, you know, really, I've got to say that Celtic have lost their shape. I mean, it's kind of a bit of a panic uh, stuff, just uh, trying to get a, a last gasp uh, winner. Maybe going to say equaliser there, George, I thought. <laughs> well, it, that, it's not surprising because the, the heroes that have been in Celtic Park tonight, at Celtic Park's re-inauguration, have certainly been the men from Inchicore. However this ends, this has been such a doughty performance by them. Champions of Ireland and taking on the champions of Scotland. And for 87 minutes, making them look mere mortals. Darren Jackson against Colin Hawkins, and Hawkins in command. Again, his starting position. He's a young lad, but he's played such a mature game. Swung toward Blinker, headed away by Gormley. Mahe. Armed by Stubbs. And uh, throw into Celtic. We see that Colin Hawkins is down there in the St. Pat's penalty area. Uh, he just passed it. I think he had an injection in his foot not to get him to play. But he'll remember this night. He certainly will. Pat's goal kick. It's Crowley. Stubbs. Cleared away by Martin Riley. That sums it up there. The way Packy Lynch uh, threw himself in front of that, he was going to get a block on that, no matter what. That shot by Larson. Now Celtic move forward once more. Just over a minute of normal time to go. Mahe sweeps the cross in. Jackson knocks it back towards Burley. Crowley comes. Then it's Donnelly on for Boyd. Martin Russell there with him. Tommy Boyd right over the top, and out of play it goes. That's what I was saying about the, the crosses that have been coming in there. They've been forced into just hitting hopeful balls, and that was a good example. I'd say hopeful, that was a hopeless one. Just look at those seats behind Trevor Wood there. The Celtic fans, this ground was full, 60,000 here, and they're all on their way home early, disappointed at their first performance since winning the Scottish Championship for the first time in a decade. Back in the European Cup for the first time in a decade, and they've come up against the Irish champions, who are playing only their 11th time in Europe. Celtic have played 72 before tonight in this stadium. Pats home and away have played only 11, including this one, and only one draw to their credit in all that time. And now they're within moments of a sensational result against Glasgow Celtic. Struck long for Gilzey. We're into stoppage time at the end of this. Who would have believed it? Celtic sweep forward once more, seeking what will be a late win. Mahe. Blinker. Larson tries to head it. Corner kicks the award. Incredibly, is Celtic's 13th corner of the game. And that was the head of Paul Ozan. It's come back towards Blinker, but in with Eddie Gormley, it's another corner. There you go, George. It was Paul Ozan and Eddie Gormley tidying up that. Lynch 
And it's Riley who gets it away. Another hero there, Packy Lynch. And here's Osama to clear this time. And let's not dismiss this as a backs to the wall performance by a team with no chance because this is the big time, this is the Champions League qualifier. Bigger teams than St. Patrick's Athletic would be happy to come to this venue and leave with a scoreless draw. And indeed, those who have include Inter Milan, Atletico Madrid and Barcelona, if you please. That's the measure of the achievement of St. Patrick's Athletic on this night. A minute and a half into stoppage time. And the referees had a look at his linesman to confirm that they say the 90 minutes are over and St. Patrick's Athletic are on the verge of an historic result after a monumental performance at the home of the Scottish champions, the spiritual home of Irish football fans abroad, you could say, and were better to achieve their finest European hour. Here comes Stubbs, Celtic seek that goal. Larson looking for Burley, Lynch gets down there. Now it's Jackson, Larson again, but a challenge from Jeff Clark. Grown in stature throughout the second half, then Martin Riley up the line. And Paul Lambert has to go and retrieve. Another look at the watch from the referee, a firm look at the watch this time. It's Paul Lambert, European Cup winner with Dortmund. Enrico Anoni. Anoni strikes it forward, looking for Larson. On towards Jackson. Hawkins goes up, Wood saves. And another Celtic attack is ended. It's desperation stuff by Celtic. But I mean, Pats have done, they've really done their job brilliantly. You said, George, about European performances. I mean, you see the likes of Emmanuel Oli going away from home instead of having to defend it times. It's part of the course, it's accepted practice, and this is only chapter one, with the second part to come this night week at Tolka Park. They may not have got an away goal, but if they get out of here with a scoreless draw, they're in a fabulous position to threaten Celtic's European survival this season. Paul Lambert. Stefan Mahe. Three minutes and a quarter of stoppage time played. Paul Lambert, past Osa, back again for Lambert. Oh, a hero block by Colin Hawkins. Knocked inside again by Tommy Boyd. This is Simon Donnelly. Still we play on. Darren Jackson, back for Boyd to sweep in another cross, which he does. Crowley goes up, gets the touch, comes out to Mahe. Mahe try to shoot, they try to close him. He's crowded out by Martin Riley. It's a goal kick. Another great you know, Martin Riley walking back there, but two great blocks, one from Colin Hawkins and the other by Packy Lynch. Heroic stuff. Martin Riley on as a substitute for Trevor Malloy and doing his stuff. They're so well drilled in what they have to do. Over four minutes of stoppage time now. It's a throw in taken by Anoni. It's Donnelly now for Celtic. Tommy Boyd, Burley moves forward. He sweeps it to Mahe. Still Celtic go up. Still Pats must defend. Mahe, Wood watches it all the way and tips it behind for a corner. But there's time for no corner because St. Patrick's Athletic have achieved their greatest result in their history. And to a resounding chorus of boos, they've reduced the Scottish champions to the status of mere mortals. St. Patrick's Athletic have done what Inter Milan and Atletico Madrid and Barcelona before them have done and secured a scoreless draw in Celtic Park. In only their 11th European tie, they've scored their second draw, their very first away from home. And to put that into perspective, this was Celtic's 73rd home tie in Europe. They've won 53 of them, and this is only the 12th draw in 73. That is a measure of the achievement of these men in navy blue and red from Inchicore, St. Patrick's Athletic, planned to perfection by Pat Dolan and his team, and executed to perfection by the 13 who performed on the pitch. What a remarkable game, a great performance by Trevor Wood, chances for Trevor Malloy and Martin Riley, but stout defence in which Hawkins were outstanding, in which Justin Front Osan was outstanding, and in which Eddie Gormley led by example. But it's invidious Owen to single anybody out, because that was a night and a half for Irish football. It was absolutely brilliant.
preparations were absolutely top class, the fitness that they showed, the game plan, the way that they frustrated Celtic, the individual performances, the collective from everything was absolutely top class. And you, I can take it from me that Celtic, I'll tell you what, they were really going on all guns, totally frustrated. Well, the second leg to come at Tolka Park this night week. But what a great, great night for St. Patrick's Athletic in only their second campaign in the Premier European Trophy, the European Cup. They lost away to Dynamo Bucharest and followed that up with a 1-1 home draw. And if you want to look at it like this, that's two consecutive draws in the European Cup. And that's St. Patrick's Athletic. What a great, great night for Pats. This is their night. This is Pat Dolan's night. This is a night for St. Patrick's Athletic. And this is Peter Collins with the big manager, Pat Dolan. Honestly, oh, I suppose they were 3-0 up, 2-0 up at half time, they were 3-0 up front, and then Rangers pulled it back. How much time are we, Johnny? OK, Pat Dolan, obviously a performance you're delighted with. Good result for you here at Celtic Park tonight. Yeah, I think tactically we were very good tonight. We were very organised, very disciplined. I thought we played some nice football at times. And, you know, people know how passionate I care about RS soccer. Sometimes we're described as leprechauns, we're described as minnows. I think a few of the lads won a few quid tonight on the draw. You know, we kept a clean sheet and we thoroughly deserved to, to get something out of the game. But my players were magnificent. We've got a young man at the stunt of defence, Colin Hawkins. And if Mick McCarthy's watching tonight, you know, I don't know how long Colin Hawkins is going to be playing for some parts of the league football club. He's a young man from Galway, he's a colossus, and my captain here, you know, a man that should have got international caps, and, you know, it's never too late, Eddie, but we were magnificent. And it's a great feeling because it's about respect. You know, Shelbourne had a reasonable result uh, as well tonight. We're trying to improve, but have a look at these facilities. You know, our training facilities, if people want success, just because we're Irish, it's not a barrier. So, you know, I'm obviously delighted tonight. I know you don't want to single out too many players because it was a great team performance, but also at the back, Trevor Wood is outstanding in goal. Yeah, but Packy Lynch, Paul Gamble, Jeff Clark, I mean, you know, we went in with Trevor Malloy, very, very dodgy, Colin Hawkins, very dodgy, our two first choice left backs out. You come to a place like Parkhead, that's very, very difficult. But we worked really hard and we were together this week and we'd like to thank everybody in Jury's Hotel in Glasgow because they've been really, really good to us and, you know, I'm happy for all the glass as well. OK, Pat, congratulations tonight. Thanks for joining us. Well done. I know you have to get into the players. Eddie, well done. Great performance out there tonight. What was it like playing out there? Uh, don't remember much about it. The, the occasion was just awesome. Um, the concentration, you don't, you, don't really, you don't really take much in until, uh, until after the game. Um, it was a great team performance. Um, we knew we had to work very hard. I mean, they, 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 they threw everything out of the the kitchen sink, I think, tonight. And we stood up well to it. Trevor pulled out a couple of saves, but uh, second half, I mean, I don't think they had a lot of possession, but they didn't really create many clear cut chances. Well, Eddie, I suppose you're looking forward to the return leg now. We wish the very best to look back at Talking Power. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thanks. Now, what a sight in Celtic Park. They will never forget this night here. Glasgow Celtic humbled by the champions of the National League. Heroes all. Master.